to True Thursdays, True and Trivial Talk. Way to mess up the intro, oh. man. It's okay. Can we do it again? No. Okay. There's no forgiveness in this show. <laughs> Welcome to Thursdays, man. Here we are. Here we are, man. We got a great show today. Man. Yeah, we do. So here's what we're going to do today. We are going to go through some Facebook date ideas from you. We're going to hear some McGinty date fails. No, none I'm, for Matt. Uh, I may throw one in. <laughs> and uh, we'll do a Valentine's by the number quiz. And we're going to end with a definition of God's love, since it is Valentine's Day. God's love versus the world's the love. The world. So, yeah. Man, how are you doing? Hey, man. I'm trying to stay warm. It is frigid. Just a little bit cold. Like as we're doing this, we hear the wind whoosh, just blowing all around us. It is cold, cold, but... It's all good. It I, is all good. I got a question for you. Yeah, bring it. Daniel. Yeah. Are you a cat? I am not a cat. <laughs> we do not have the cat filter on for the Zoom In today. case you don't know what we're talking about, you need to stop what you're doing. Well, maybe after the podcast. Yeah. Go find on YouTube <laughs> this the new video, new viral sensation. Uh, how would you find it? I'm not a cat. Go on to YouTube. I am not a cat. I'm not Zoom a cat. court hearing. Hilarious. It's like a lawyer who has a, a Zoom cat filter. And uh, he can't figure out how to turn it off, and it is hilarious and taking the world by storm right now. Yeah, that so. made my day. Not gonna lie, I appreciate <laughs> you sharing that. Um, pretty funny. Matt man. Walsh had some pretty funny comments about it yeah. on the podcast yesterday. For sure. All right, so I'm not a cat, uh, but we do have some great Facebook comments uh, uh-huh. from some of y'all. We asked the question um, online that said, "This help us out. What's your ideal Valentine's date setting? Seriously, Valentine's Day is really close. Yeah, and we need some tips, so uh, that's why yeah. we asked you. So yeah, we'll take all the help we can help get. Help us, for sure. please. All right, so here's some of the comments we got from somebody. Sarah Gilbert, you said, mm, taking a walk together somewhere mm. scenic, maybe with a nice packed lunch dinner. Uh, in this weather? Uh, I'm not, not so sure not, that's going to happen this, this weekend. Day. But... I'm sorry, Sarah. I hate to burst your bubble on that. <laughs> but, unless you just have some really awesome jackets. Yeah. Um, but that is a great great idea. For sure. It's like yeah. food and a hike. Uh, win-win. Yeah. For sure. All right. We got another one from uh, Nancy Gilbert. A nice meal in front of a roaring fire. Hey, it's cold here in Pennsylvania. We yeah. have people listening to us in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. You know, that fireside date is making a lot of sense right now in Texas. A lot of sense. Matt, how, how... I think like last year, I, I remember doing Valentine's Day in like a short sleeve shirt. Oh yeah, Brooke and I hung up a hammock by a creek last Valentine's Day. Oh. Welcome to Texas, y'all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, this Valentine's Day, it's going to be high of 20 degrees. Pretty cold. It's going to be insanely cold. Yep. Monday's going to be nine degrees. Ugh. Oh my word. What is wrong? How's that global warming? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Won't go there. All Very right. Uh, Michelle Treader says, everyone gone and dinner and a movie at home uninterrupted. Does that everyone include Jason? Does that include Does that include your husband, I, Michelle? I think Jason. I, think, I don't know. I don't maybe. Know if, it, it, <laughs> I don't think he's included in the everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will assume. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, hey. hopefully you get to... Go on a date with your wife. Yeah, that, that without might, the kids. <laughs> we know Jason and Michelle pretty well, so we're okay giving them a bit of our time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Rosemary Dillon says, "We went to dinner prior to Valentine's Day. Man, they've already predated. And they're done. Yeah, that's good. They knocked it out in the park. Neither one of us likes to go out on the night. Last year, Jeff and me sent flowers for the first time. I'm allergic in many ways, <laughs> in many years, because my daddy always sent me flowers on Valentine's oh, Day. Sweet. It was the first Valentine's Day without my dad. Oh." Well, Jeff, well done there, dude. You, um, many, many, many points. Yep. Many Thanks points. for sharing that, Rosemary. Yeah, for sure. Good. And then um, that's it. We we were hoping to get a few more help, a little more help out there, Come guys. Come on, where are you Seriously. all? Seriously. We you, need uh, help. We need a lot of help. So let's talk about how much help we need. All right. Seriously. You got a date fail you want to share? It's not really a date fail. It's like all the dates. All the dates <laughs> all are the failures? Dates. They're not all failures. No. Oh, okay. So one of the things that Brooke gives me a really hard time about is the fact that when we were dating, I almost rarely ever paid for her meal. Almost never. Like if it was a date, if I asked her out for something romantic, yeah, I'd pay for the date. But if it was like, hey, we're on the way to somewhere, let's get something to eat, or we got to run some errands or do some stuff, let's get some food here or there. I wouldn't pay for her meal. Oh my goodness. Okay. Dude. Now here's the thing. Split checks. <laughs> here's the thing. And Brooke always thought she didn't say anything. She felt like, does he really like me? Cause he never pays for my meal. Oh, but I'm thinking, Hey, uh, we both work at the same place. I respect you as an equal. I'm not going to treat yeah. you like someone below me. I'm going to treat you like, so this, I, I don't necessarily agree with this philosophy. This is just, 
I, I went to a school and I had some fairly liberal feminist teachers uh, at the boarding school I went to, and their whole philosophy is you should never buy or pay for a woman's dinner because it, you're telling them they're less than you are. They're an oh, equal. Man. Treat them like an equal. Oh, man. Like, well, I don't want them to think that I think they're less than me. I'll treat you like an equal. Um, you know, so that, that philosophy spilled and you know, kind of bled into my philosophy of dating a little bit. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah, but, so she had to deprogram you. I had to be deprogrammed. She still gives me grief about that today. But my, my <laughs> well, thing was, she should. I was like, babe, listen, if I had spent all that money buying you dinner and lunch for just hangouts, not real date dates, I wouldn't have been able to save up for one, a ring for you probably, or a sweet honeymoon in Hawaii. So you're welcome. <laughs> that was the trade-off. Okay. I feel like, anyway, how about yeah. you, dude? You got, you got something? Uh... No, man, I'd, I'd get it all right. I'd do everything right. No, I. I yeah, hate I, you. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I, uh, I, I. We were thinking about this, and um, as we're talking about this, I, I, I thought of the first, this whole Valentine's. Our church does a date night, so hmm. um, they also do a, a Christmas shopping day, and uh, at, right around Christmas, where um, you know you get to send your kids to the church, and you get to go out and go shopping. And so the first day that we had, the first shopping day that we had here, we had been here at Pflugerville for just a few months. And uh, we, I think at that point, we just had one kid, but uh, we had sent him off uh, to uh, childcare. And so we had the rest of the day, it's like a Saturday, the rest of the day to be able to, to, to go and shop. And that's, and that's what I thought we were going to do. And uh, so we we have no kid. We have the day open, and uh, my first response is, "All right, so let's get some shopping done. Where are we going to go? What are we going to do?" And uh, that didn't go over so well. Um, there's some different expectations on my wife's part. Let's just say uh, you have a day without the kid, and you want to spend it going shopping all day. And uh, so I learned real quick that that was uh, that's date day, man. Yeah, that's that's date day. I mean, shopping can be part of the date, a, you know? a part of it, but I, I had no plan. So I had no I had no plan because I left it wide open. Hey, no plan, where, Matt. Where do we need to go and shop? What do we need to get? And um, yeah, it was a colossal fail. I've learned my lesson. Yeah. Yeah, he's so. not going shopping this Valentine's Day. <laughs> nope. Nope. No, sir. Take saying, advantage of those. Of he's those, sitting by the fireplace. Take advantage of those. Date opportunities where you can get the kids away and go go like do a date. Yeah, it's hard, you know, when you have kids to get out and do something that's expensive. So we kind of set up a little bistro table in the corner of our living room. Yeah. And once in a while, we'll have little date nights so after the kids go to bed. We'll make I got a pretty good cheese fondue recipe. Yeah. You know, which is always so weird because in order to make fondue, you have to buy wine. And I'm always like, hey, listen, this is for cooking. This is for cooking. I swear, <laughs> this is we're gonna we're gonna cook all the alcohol out of it. You know, this is for fondue. Don't judge me. Anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, good times. All right. So those are our Facebook things and our, our dating fails. Um, we got a quiz now, Matt has been putting me through the ringer on these quizzes we've been doing lately yeah. and I've not been doing so good. No, and I told him, man, I got to so quiz good. you and see how well you do. So today I've got a quiz for Matt. I and guess I you, opened myself up for that. You totally week. set yourself up for I that one. Know. So I got a quiz. It's a Valentine quiz. Okay. It's Valentine's by the numbers. Okay. And I'm going to list off. I'm going to tell you a number, okay. and, you, and I'm going to give you some options, and okay. you got to tell me which one you think that number applies to. So okay. as you listen to this, see if y'all can get this right. Uh, Matt, are you ready to go? I think so. All right, here we go, buddy. All right, the first number is 36 million. 36 million. 36 million. A, cards sold each year, and these are all Valentine's related. B, heart-shaped boxes of chocolate sold each year. C, dollars worth of jewelry sold. Thirty-six million. Uh, I would say it's either A or B. I'm going to go with. Uh, I'm going to go with cards. Cards sold each year. Yep. Answer is heart shaped boxes oh, of chocolate. My next guess. Sorry, my friend. Strike one. You fail. Okay. All right. Next one. The number is sixty-four. Sixty-four. It's a smaller number. Okay. Sixty-four percent. Okay, of men that give flowers. So sixty-four percent of men that give flowers. B, percentage of Americans that celebrate Valentine's Day. C, percentage of cards bought by women. <laughs> A, percentage of men that give flowers. B, percentage of Americans that celebrate Valentine's Day. C, percentage of cards bought by women. I'm going to say... Uh... Do, 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 do. 
Who buys more cards? Yeah, that's a question. Like, yeah. You think for that one. All right, let's say C. C? Yep. Percentage of cards bought by women is it's... incorrect, my ah. friend. It is percentage of men that give flowers. That's probably good. That's probably good that it's not 64% of women that buy cards because the dudes, you guys, you need to buy cards. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. In, in Japan, they have Valentine's Day, and I think one week or two weeks later, they have, get this, White Day. White Day? White Day. And I don't know why it's called White Day. Maybe it's like white chocolates or what. But like, I think on Valentine's Day, the guys buy stuff for the girls. Uh -huh. And on White Day, the girls give stuff to the boys. Okay. And I might have that totally flipped and reversed. Uh, I might, you know, my, my parents will have to fat, fact check me on that one. Uh, <laughs> fact check, please. Um, but yeah, it's really funny. They've really commercialized um, the stink out of it over there. Of course, um, yeah, that White Day would never fly here. No, that wouldn't, wouldn't be good. <laughs> All right. Uh, somehow it flies in Japan. Culturally inappropriate. Yes, I feel. All right. Next number. You ready? Yep. 27. 27. It's a percentage. percentage. Or it could be a percentage. Okay. Uh, 27 percentage of women who buy a gift for themselves. <laughs> okay. That's A. B, different sayings on candy conversation hearts. So there could be 27 okay. different sayings on candy conversation hearts. Okay. C, Percentage of people who buy a gift for their pet. A, women who buy gifts for themselves. Percentage okay. B, different saying. C, gift for their pet. I would say that um, probably a greater percentage than that of women buy gifts for themselves. And um, uh, what was B again? B was different sayings on candy conversation No, I think hearts. there's way more than that. I think there's way more than 27. So I'm going to say okay. pets. Pets. Yes. Matt, this is your first one, right? Well yes. done there, my friend. Well done. Yes. Okay. So that's uh, one out of three. Okay. One well, out of three. All right. 85. 85. Average number of cards received by elementary teachers. Okay. B, average dollars spent on a Valentine's Day date. C, percentage of Valentine's Day cards bought by women. What's the number again? 85. 85. Yep. 85. Number of cards received by elementary teachers. B, average dollars spent on a Valentine's Day date. C, percentage of I'm gonna, Valentine's Day I'm gonna say bought B. by women. B, average dollars spent on a Valentine's Day is incorrect, oh. my friend. Boo -boo. The answer is C, percentage C. of Valentine's Day cards bought by women. Okay. All, All right. right. So the vast majority of you ladies are buying cards out there compared to us dudes. Yeah. Uh, I guess Hallmark kind of, you know, they know how to market towards women. Yeah. <laughs> well done there. Um, you need to work on us guys. We're not sold yet. All right. Survey says. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Where do they get these numbers? Is there like a Valentine's Day census? Yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how they check all that. But Who knows? I'd... It's probably all like social media data. Maybe so. You know? Maybe so. All right. Next number. 15. 15. 15. Average number of chocolates in a box of candy. Life is like a box okay. of chocolates. All right. B. Percentage Wait, of that, women. Was that your Forrest Gump impersonation? I wasn't really trying too hard. Okay. okay. Well, I would like a box of chocolates. <laughs> uh, I need to work on it some. Yeah, I'd like to hear you try not your good. Forrest Gump. I didn't even, yeah. <laughs> you know, I will not embarrass myself. Yeah. Good. B, percentage of women who send flowers to themselves. Wait, I got distracted with Forrest Gump. What was the number again? 15. Okay. 15% 15 of women send flowers themselves. Like every, every question is going to have something about. Ladies doing stuff for themselves. Yeah. Because the dudes are failures. Okay. Yeah. All right. C, average days spent planning a Valentine's Day date. 15 days spent. Okay. Okay. Spending 15 days planning a date. That date better be epic, my okay. friend. Um, a, average number of chocolates in a box of candy. B, percentage of women who send flowers themselves. C, average days spent planning. I'm going to say A. A? Number, uh, average number of chocolates in a box. You are so wrong, my friend. Oh. So wrong. <laughs> Oh, it feels so good. Next week, I'm, I'm going back to asking the question. The answer is B, <laughs> percentage of women who send flowers to themselves. All right. From here on out, every question that involves ladies doing something for themselves, that's what I'm guessing. Okay. Because I'm, I'm going with that. Dudes. Count on dudes failing. <laughs> that's sort of the, the We've, we've like already the, set that up here. Yeah. We're, right. Okay. It's It reminds me of like your driver's test. If when in doubt, the answer is stop and proceed with caution. Yeah. Right. It's like, I don't know the answer is, but- Stop and proceed with caution. Sounds pretty good here. <laughs> All right. Next number, 61. Average amount spent in the U.S. on Valentine's Day gifts. Okay, so it could be $61. Uh -huh. B, average cost of rose bouquets given on Valentine's Day. C, percentage of men who say they'd like to receive flowers. 
<laughs> I hope that's not the case. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to say average amount of money spent on flowers. Average amount spent on in the U.S. In the U.S. on, on Valentine's Day gifts. Isn't flowers the on Valentine's Day gifts? The the second one is cost of rose bouquets. Given oh on no, I, Day. that's what I'm gonna say. Cost of a rose bouquet. You are wrong. Man. <laughs> the answer is C. Percentage of men who say they'd like to receive flowers. What? Hey, no comments. What's the what's the percentage? Again? I am not commenting on this. What's the percentage again? I'm not doing it. No, sixty one percent. Oh my goodness. Okay. Man, if, if that's you out there, I'm I'm sorry. No, I, no, we're not. I'm gonna just saying I'm sorry <laughs> if, if I if I've hurt your feelings, but really, yes. Uh, okay. To all the men in my life, if I've not given you flowers and you wanted some, too bad. I not I <laughs> I ain't doing it. <laughs> it's hard enough to buy flowers for oh, my wife. That is You're not crazy. on my list, bud. Sorry. I'm not sorry that I got that one wrong. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Next number, one thousand four hundred. Okay. 1400. A, different cards made by Hallmark each year. Oh, yeah. Different cards made each year. Wow. Yeah. B, the year Valentine's Day started. So 1400 AD, I assume. Okay. C, the average number of marriage proposals per hour in the US. Now, that does not include proposals, it's just okay. proposals. Okay. 1400. A, hour. different cards made each year by Hallmark. Yeah. B, the different Valentine's Day started. The, the year Valentine's Day started, see average number of marriage proposals in the hour. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with A. You're going to go with A? Different okay. cards made by Hallmark each year. You are correct, yes. my friend. Finally. Now, here's where I have to give Hallmark right. props. 1,400 different cards each year. And that's just Hallmark. Like, that's not American Greeting or That's Carlton. just Hallmark, man. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, coming up, I, you know what they do? They just keep the same sayings and swap out the backgrounds. They have maybe, to. Just different so. artwork or whatever. After all these years of doing it. They got like, yeah. like a gazillion stock images, like just swipe out the different cutesy photos, <laughs> the cat pictures and the dog stuff. And yeah. There you go. All right. 19 million. 19 million. 19 million. A, pounds of conversation hearts sold each year. B, dollars spent on stuffed animals. C, estimated first dates in the U.S. on Valentine's Day. How do they estimate that? <laughs> I don't know. You know? Okay, so... Uh, A, pounds of conversation uh, hearts. B, dollars spent on stuffed animals. C, estimated first dates in the I'm U.S. on say Valentine's B, Day. B, uh, stuffed animals. Dollars, $19 million spent on stuffed animals is... Incorrect. Sorry. Boo-boo. The answer is pounds of conversation hearts sold each year. That was, yeah, that was going to be my next guess. $19 million pounds of just conversation hearts. Yes. That's a lot of candy. Yeah. That's All right. The candy that really doesn't taste that great. We got two more left. Ready? Yeah. Actually, Do you three. like the conversation hearts? Man, I kind of dig them, man. They're weird, but they're good. Yeah. Okay. Some flavors are weird, though. Yeah. The cinnamon ones? No. Yeah. No dice. All right. Four billion. Four billion. Four hundred million individual pieces of chocolate candy sold. A. B. Dollars worth of diamonds, gold, and silver sold. C, Valentine's cards sold each year worldwide. Four billion. Four hundred million. So that's four, basically 4.4 4 billion something. Pieces of candy, uh, dollars worth of diamonds, gold, and silver sold. Are Valentine's cold, uh, cards sold each year world, worldwide? Dollars spin on diamonds. You are correct, my friend. Dollars yeah. worth of diamonds, gold, and silver sold. Well done. Cool. All right, got another big number for you. 145 million. Is this almost over? I got two left, man. All right, all right. Two left. Well, my we'll like, um, I just, I feel like I'm, I'm just failing. Just striking right. out. <laughs> I got three right. I got three right. 145 million. A bouquets of roses sold in the U.S. B Valentine's cards sent every year in the U.S. Or C dollars worth of chocolate candy sold. 145 million, my friend. Um, candy. Candy. Uh, you are incorrect, my friend. Okay. It is B. Valentine's cards sent every year in the U.S. 145 million Valentine's cards sent every year, that's just in our lot. country. That's that's quite a bit. All right, last one. You All ready? These numbers are kind of starting to run together, and I, f I feel like some of the some of the sa like we're hearing some of the same answers multiple times. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that sounds like an excuse, my friend. No, just it's just taking a long time. Go. It's okay. Go. Jesus we're loves good. you. All right, yeah. 224 million. 224 million. A, this last one. Okay. Redemption. A, dollars spent on Valentine's Day dates in the US. B, 
children's valentines given in school valentines parties c number of roses grown for valentines day 224 million dollars spent on valentines day dates children's b valentines uh given in school i'm gonna say children's valentines given in school 224 million children's valentines cards given is i'm sorry bud Wrong. Oh, it really? is wrong. Boo boo. Oh. The answer is C. Number of roses grown number for Valentine's Day: two hundred and twenty-four million. Those roses gave their lives. So I got thirty percent. For your dates, thirty percent. Um, three, three out of ten. That's... I think there was eleven actually. Oh. I had eleven. I felt a little better when it was three out of ten, but that's cool. So next time you give me a quiz, you gonna cut me some slack? <laughs> cut me some slack, no. Jack. No, no slack. You didn't cut me any. <laughs> this is true. All right. It's all in fun. Well, uh, when we get back after our five-second break, we are going to do a serious segment about the definition of love, God's versus the world. Yes. Yes. So we're going to go through different um, diametrically opposing terms and words, and we're going to unpack them a little bit. So we'll see you in five seconds. Hey, we are back on this special Valentine's Day edition of yes. Thursdays, True and Trivial Talk. And now we move to the True Talk, Truish Talk. Yeah, the other stuff was true too. It was just, you know, fun. It was, it was. Hey, um, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about uh, love. And uh, everybody thinks they know, everybody wants it. Uh, but the world's definition of love is very different from what God's definition of love is. And so, um, and we know love is all throughout scripture and uh, it's who God is. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at some uh, some different um, terms that the world uses to describe love and then can contrast that with what God says. So first of all, you ready? I am ready. And just uh, before we get into yeah, it, too, I think we need to also define when we say world, we kind of are talking about culture. Culture, yeah. You know, what is uh, the culture's definition of these things or how do they view and approach love versus God's teaching on love in which, Scripture? Which affects us because sure. you know a lot of a lot of what we think about love has been given to us by the world and uh, the movies, music, yeah, and TV everything. shows you watch. You know, yeah. just uh, we are a product of our culture, whether we yep. want to care to admit it or not. We all are. So it takes work to uh, to think kingdom minded and to think about God's love and uh, go in that direction rather than the world's definition. All right, so, so. give me our first diametrically opposed uh, words. Yeah, so the world would define love as uh, being feelings-based or even non-committal. Mm. And um, God would define love as being a covenant type of love. So unpacking that, um, you know, God, uh, in, in God sending his son Jesus, he He made uh, he the ultimate act of love, um, but showing that uh, he loves us, and and when we enter into a love marriage relationship, that he wants us to be committed. He wants yeah. us to uh, act out of that commitment and that covenant that we've made with our spouse. It's kind of like and, the question of what is the foundation, right? Right. These words start right. to deal with what is the foundation of your love? Is yeah. it based on how you feel about each other? Because that changes, Yeah. right? And it can result in some noncommittal sort of attitudes. Which... Exactly, and if if your love is based on feelings, um, that that's that's not going to carry you through. Mm -hmm. um, like like you said, there'll be times where you know you deal with all kinds of feelings, and we don't as Christians we don't live by feelings; we live by faith. And when we allow feelings to drive us, um, it it makes a mess of things. And so uh, that's why a lot of marriages end up in divorce because you know the the feelings just aren't there. And you know, love is is working through that, and uh, and I'm not. I know that sometimes you know it's inevitable that divorce yeah. happens, but um, we've got to be very careful to remember that you know in a love relationship, when we make a covenant, that we we honor that covenant even when we may not feel the same feelings that maybe used to have. Yeah, and covenant is kind of like a biblical word for commitment. Yeah. you know, or. In in other words, it was a, a special contract. You know, yeah. God would say, I'm "Binding a, contract." Yeah, I'd make a contract with Israel, a yeah. covenant. You know, the old and New Testament are sort of the old covenant and the new covenant. Right. And so, it's a set of promises you make to each other. You think about the vows you make. And so, um, yeah, covenant. It's based on promises and a commitment I made to you. Yeah. Because sometimes those feelings are there, and you have that to fall back on. Yeah. Uh, Doesn't mean you shouldn't have feelings for each other if you don't like each other <laughs> ever. That's a problem, right? <laughs> That's a problem. Yeah. All right. So next little um, comparison we have here is sort of selfish versus sacrificial. Now I will say this: um, a lot of these words, 
you know, that we're attributing to cultural norms aren't necessarily ones they would use, but they're observations that we can make ourselves, Yeah. right? So love tends to be kind of selfish. There's a lot of focus on self-love, make sure to really love yourself well, and you're sort of the, the focus of that. Whereas in Scripture, true love is sacrificial, puts someone else before you. Right. You put that person's needs before your needs. With Jesus being the ultimate um, act of sacrificial For sure. Love. Yeah. Uh, not my will, but your will be done, and really leaning on the... The, the Father's direction for what is right and wrong and um, not necessarily putting your needs first. And that's not easy to do. Nope. It takes, you know... Dying, it takes, it's dying to yourself every day. Right. And we use that agape love yeah. to sort of define what that looks like, where it's a love that you cannot conjure on your own. It's yeah. a love that can only come from God's Spirit moving and changing in you. Well, and I love Ephesians 5, where Paul talks about husbands love your wife just as Christ loved the church yes. and gave himself up for her. Perfect. Um, you know, that's, that's... A tall order for us dudes. I have to, yeah. You I, know? I have to continually go back to that and and uh, remind myself that I'm I'm to be like Christ and uh, to give myself up and sacrifice. Yep. Yep. What's the next one we see on next this list? Next one we see is the world would say uh, pri- being prideful. Um, and God would say being humble. And mm. and in that, um, you know, being prideful, uh, again, we, we wouldn't, they wouldn't say that, but they would say, you know, in, in looking at love as, as being something where, you know, I, I, um, it's, it's all about me and my feelings, my, my, my needs need to be met. Mm. And, um, you know, with, with God's love being a, a humble love where, again, sacrificial and being willing to, to give up of yourself for the other person. And so you think of the words pride, it's an elevated view of self or yeah. an over-focus on self. Yeah. And humility is an accurate view of yourself, right? right? It's right there in the middle. Because if you have a low view of yourself, that's a form of pride too, because you're still thinking about yourself more yeah. than you need to be. Oh, I'm not this, I'm not good enough for this, or yeah. what do people think about me? It's um, me, 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 me. Exactly, the me, me, me language, yeah. right? Um, the next one we see here too is sort of the world will say record keeping. They wouldn't say this, but we observe this like idea of in relationships record keeping when, yeah. when someone's done something wrong to you versus forgiving. Yeah. Right. And this can go to not just uh, romantic relationships, but to just relationship. everyday relationship, right? Yeah. What does it mean to love somebody? Man, it's tough not to keep a record of wrongs. We totally get that. But there's almost a sense you of you always do this or you never do that, you know. Yeah. Like yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm trying to think of an example, maybe pop culture that sort of glorifies this a little bit. Um, but sort of blasting things on social media or shaming people for something they did to you, yeah. that, how they wronged you. And um, you can get a lot of likes and you know validation online for blasting somebody how they did something wrong to you. Uh, but it's a lot harder to forgive, right. a lot harder to forgive. But that's what God has called us to do. And forgiving doesn't necessarily mean forgetting. Yeah, It just means I'm not holding this against that person anymore. Right. It's and very difficult. Very difficult. And it takes, takes God working in us to, to get us to that point. Um, the next one's interesting. What do we got? Next one, happiness versus joy. So the world tells you that uh, love is you, you got to be happy, you know, and and you need to be, you need to be happy in this in this relationship. And and true love, you know, there's not always going to be those times where uh, everything is is happy hunky dory. Um, but true joy, as, as we know, joy is is um, being content regardless of whether the situation is happy or not, mm. but having that peace in Christ and, and being content. and Contentness and, is a key word, I think, to yeah. joy, because there's a more of a choice involved with joy. Right. I choose to focus on and do things that will put me in a positive disposition, whereas right. happiness is sort of... Um, Exter- it's more external. Exactly. It's like, more external. Like It's dependent on external circumstances happening to you. Right. Right. Happenstance. Yeah. And so, you know... A lot of people look at the relationships and go, "Man, I'm not happy. Something must be wrong," hmm. you know. And sometimes that can be an indicator. Yeah. Um, but not always, right. right? And if a relationship isn't making you happy, does that mean um, you're doing something wrong, or they're doing something wrong? And just it can be a, a poor place to place your focus. Sure. You know, because it can become selfish very quickly. All right, man. What you got next? The next one I have here is receiving versus giving, right? Or um, service. You know, when we get into a relationship, sometimes it's it's very easy to get selfish. Like, this is what I want out of the relationship. Yeah. Uh, this is what I want uh, to see happen. Um, my and, needs, my needs need to be met. Yeah, my about yeah. my needs being met. Yeah. You know, and it's you know it's important to remember that meeting each other's needs is not a bad thing. Right. You know, God designed us to be need meters, uh, to to meet each other's needs in a healthy way, but when it becomes sort of you know 
um, out of whack or unbalanced, that's where it can become a major issue where you're too focused on your needs, yeah. right? And then you're not focused on the other person's needs as well. And that can become very selfish. Yeah. Uh, but the Bible has called us to, to, to think about giving more than receiving, yep. uh, to think of how we can serve each other. Um, have you ever seen a wedding where they did a foot washing? Uh, no, I've never seen that. I have. Uh, have you? It's weird. Yeah, I bet it's weird. <laughs> it's like, okay, you you got to really love this person if you're going to wash their feet. It's a true <laughs> test. It, ladies, if you want to figure out if a man will really marry you, say, all right, in our wedding, would you wash my feet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, bunions and all, baby. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think my wife would be okay with that. No. Yeah. My, yeah, my wife wouldn't have been. But if it. you've done that in your wedding, cool. Like, that's cool. Hey, yeah, more power to you. Well yeah. done there. Yeah. Uh, we did communion at our wedding. Some people don't think yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but yeah, I think there's something you, we're not treating it with, um, you know, less respect. It's just, hey, man, this is our first time to do communion together yeah. and really focusing on, hey, we're in communion with Christ as well. Right. You know, the symbology there. Yeah. Which, okay, I know you you got onto me earlier teasing me for side notes. In our wedding, our communion bread was moldy. Oh, really? <laughs> so we get up there and, you know, we come to the bread and which we bought the day before and the pastor fishing, which is which is Jason, you yeah. know, he's like, um, the the bread has green stuff all over it. It's mold. I'm gonna try and <laughs> find a little he's trying to whisper so everyone doesn't hear him in the sanctuary. He's like trying to find it up you know, two molecules of bread that don't have mold on it for us to share. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah, good times. Yeah. Hey, we also, you know, forgot that my wedding ring uh, on the on the for the wedding as well. Oh. Brooks uh oldest sister the the no, bridesmaid what's that matron maid, matron of honor matron of honor or maid of honor maid of, yeah, maid of, of honor, honor yeah, yeah. maid of honor uh forgot my ring for the wedding so we had to do it with um jason's ring yeah <laughs> <laughs> with the with the pastor officiating's ring oh what a fail yes um, and yeah uh, no more wedding stories yeah all right we'll move on all right uh, what's the next one we have here? all right the next one is tolerant uh versus truthful so the world would tell you Ooh. to be tolerant Ooh. and um and tolerant is a is a is a tricky word um, because uh, what the world sees as tolerant, it's basically accepting of of whatever, you know, um, accept people for who they are, um, be willing to accept this and, and this about this person. And, um, it's a blank check, essentially. Yeah, which, uh, you know, in, in some senses, that's, that's not bad. But what the world has kind of made it to mean is that we, we, have, to, we have to accept people strictly as they are but even if god's, that's even if their behaviors are hurtful to themselves exactly or but harmful to other people god's god's love is truthful and god tells us to speak the truth in love and to um to communicate um even even when it's hard and to to share the truth and to, to share hey i love you enough to tell you that this mm. is not what god wants for you this is not who god is uh has made you to be or this is not who uh not what god um yeah I'm trying to think of the scripture passage that says, bear with each other's faults. Oh, that's uh, Galatians 6? Yeah. So 6, 9? Basically, you know, we all are messed up people. Yeah. We're all broken. And we can't be nagging on each other. Yeah. Right? We can't say every time we see something wrong, bringing it up and confronting it. Yeah. That's just overwhelming. Yeah. Right? So there's a certain sense to, yeah, we need to kind of just cut each other a little bit of slack, but also pick those moments where, you know what, this is, this is a real problem. I'm not just going to tolerate this, you saying this is who I am and I'm not going to change. No, this aspect of your personality or whatever, it's a rough edge that needs God to, needs to... It's a blind spot that needs to be And addressed. we all have them. We yeah. all have them. And if we have someone that you love and you know, we need to be able to speak that truth in love. And a lot of that speaking the truth in love is timing, Yeah. right? So much of it is timing. <laughs> it, you know, Love is patient, right? So that means sometimes even if you have the right tone and approach and you've really prayed it through, man timing yeah. is so much right yeah. really considering is this a good time to approach this topic yeah you know and i don't always do well with that uh yeah <laughs> i guess for all of us yeah good times all right so last one we got here we had, uh is control versus freedom control versus freedom man that is there's a tendency, right? If something is really important and valuable to you to want to kind of hold on to it too tightly, mm -hmm. right? You hold the, the phrase, if you love someone, let them go, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you try to hold on to something or someone too tightly, uh, it's going to create friction, yeah, right? But there's that tendency that is um, wanting to sort of step in and do more than what you should be doing to preserve that and protect that. And, you know, it's all about how you handle things, yeah. right? Giving each other freedom 
to follow Christ and give each other freedom to be ourselves is really empowering. Yeah. Right. Well, I think I think that you know the whole the whole reason that uh, God has given us free will is because He wants us to to choose to love Him. Mm. You know, He could He control it and manipulate us where you know we're we're programmed. Uh, to have a relationship with him, you will love me. <laughs> he could, but um, but love is a choice, and yeah. um, and love when when we have the freedom to choose to love someone, um, it's it makes all the difference. It's almost like the genie's rules from Aladdin, right? I cannot raise anybody from the dead, and I cannot make anyone fall in love. Yeah, which is really you know kind of interesting parallel because God doesn't make us love Him. Yeah, He doesn't make He does He gives us free will, autonomy to make those choices. And we make a lot of bad choices. Yeah, we do. But we're also capable of making great ones. Yep. So, all right. Well, maybe you all have some other comparisons and diametrically opposed concept ideas in these definitions of love. I want to encourage you all to really think and ponder about these things, especially as we approach Valentine's Day. I mean, Valentine, the one that this day is named after, I mean, he died, right? He died for his faith. Yep. Um, And so we think, man, it's a great example of sacrificial love. Are you willing to die for your spouse? And I wasn't sure where you're going with that. Like he died. Like, well, yeah, he died. That was a long time ago. Full everyone, stop. everyone dies. <laughs> everyone died. No, he died for his faith. Yeah. Let's be yeah. specific about that. He's not still alive. No, that no, he's not ago. like um yeah, not like one of those like people who live forever stories. I got something in my eye. All right. Don't cry, dude. It's I'm okay. not gonna cry. I'm, not gonna, I'm, okay. I'm okay. All right. Well, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Let's, yeah, let's wrap this up. I think you prayed last time, so you, you do it. It's my turn. Take it, man. All right, let's uh let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you loved us in a profound and deep and committed way. Yeah. It drove you to the cross. Our sin put you there, but you chose, you chose to die for us. And God, I pray that we would look towards you for what it means to love each other, to love our friends, to love our spouses, to love those who are meaningful in our lives and those who are just in our circle of influence, God. I pray that we would love in a way that reflects your goodness. Mm that you would drive out any selfishness in our hearts, any me-centered philosophies and concepts and ideas. God, they have no place in our lives and in our hearts and our minds. So, God, we ask that you would, would indwell in our hearts and that your love would made bold in us, and not just through speech, but through action. And yeah. this Valentine's Day, I pray, God, that you would be glorified, and we pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. All right, that's it. But, hey, we love you. We just love want, you. Just want you to you know that. You really love me. <laughs> we love you, man. Yeah. Um, hey, but we do. We do. Hey, thank you so much for listening and uh, tuning in. And we want to invite you back next week. And uh, Daniel, tell us where we can where Hey, we speaking can of love, out. spread the love. Share the love. <laughs> share this podcast. Get on there. You like this thing? Share it. Some of you are awesome about that. Thank you. You guys are super fans. Uh, but really, don't hesitate to share that link on your Facebook timeline or you know, give that thumbs up on the YouTube. That is a big help. Uh, but we really like to see some increasing in just people listening to this. A lot of people, a lot more of you watch this than just listen to it, which is really kind of surprising. I feel like our, mm-hmm. our ugly mugs would not be um, something you want to grace your eyes with. Um, but <laughs> uh, but if you want to listen to it as you do chores or do your uh, your daily drive to work, if some of you still aren't working from home, um, then, you know, take advantage of it. We're on all the platforms. Take us with you. Take us with you. We're on the Spotify's. We're on the iHeartRadio's. We're on the... Google? Apple? At Google's. The Apple's. <laughs> We're on Stitcher. You can ask Alexa to play it for you. Whatever that is. Stitcher. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Have a happy Valentine's Day. Yeah.